Hello and welcome to the Dream Job Ready podcast. My name is Dane Sharp. I'm your host and this is episode number 43 of the show and it's a super important one. My guest is Jason Olive, who's the marketing director for Movember. Movember is a nonprofit organization and a charity that I and thousands of others have supported since its inception. The organization plays a key role in raising awareness for and helping to change the face of men's health on a global scale, focusing on mental health, suicide prevention, prostate cancer and testicular cancer. And given the year that we've all just had, Movember has also played a critical role in helping men and their friends and family deal with the mental health impacts that work, jobs and their careers can have. I put a call out to my LinkedIn network at the end of November after seeing thousands of amazing moustaches and mows uh, across the web. Um, I put a call out to try and speak with someone at Movember about job and work-related mental health issues. And I appreciate the time that the Movember leadership team gave me and specifically Jason gave me for this episode. Please note that the opinions of guests are their own and not those of the companies they have worked for. G'day, Jason. Thank you so much for joining me on the podcast, mate. Um, look, start us off. Tell us about your key responsibilities in your role and why your job's a dream job. So as the marketing director in Australia, I'm responsible for a really incredible team of people that work across marketing, uh, content, communications, and leading the strategy across these functions. Um, what it actually looks like um, in terms of the, the day-to-day is, is really connecting the income and impact efforts that we deliver across the organisation and laddering back up to our organisational strategy. The reason why it's a dream job is that I've actually spent the majority of my career working in ad agencies Uh, creative agencies, media agencies, and a bit of consultancy stuff too. And in those roles, I've held quite a few strategy leadership roles. And I I definitely got to the point where I felt like I wanted to be helping solve problems for organisations that were actually striving to do good. I think there's a lot of people that are in that headspace at the moment. And I'm hearing more and more from people that I mentor that they want more purpose in the work that they're doing. They, they're seeking to try and make a bit of a difference in the world. So I think there's definitely, and I'm probably digressing a bit here, but there's definitely a case for companies, CSR programs to, to connect up with um, HR and, and talent development a bit more. Yeah, perfect. And you know, you, you mentioned a couple of things there. I'd love to uh, drill in a, a little bit during this chat. And one of the key questions, personally, that I want to ask you is about working for a charity after working for you know non charities for so long. Because it's um it's something I've never worked for a charity. I've worked with them in a partnership kind of roles with different uh, jobs that I've had. But uh, it's something that's always interested me. So I, I want to get to that in a little bit. But um, let's just start with November twenty twenty or, or Movember twenty twenty, as it's um you know been been affectionately known. Obviously, the business and the organisation is is twenty four seven all year round, but the month of November is so critical uh, to, I guess, getting the message out, helping people, raising funds. How was, in a, in a bizarre year that we've had, how was 2020 uh, for you in your role uh, and, and, and as importantly for the Movember organisation? Yeah, it's definitely been a whirlwind, to, to be honest. And I think we're really lucky and, and I'm really thrilled that Australia really got behind Movember this year. We've got such a passionate group of supporters that really go above and beyond for our three cause areas. So we look after prostate cancer, testicular cancer, and mental health. This year, we we had done a really big job in positioning that this year was the the most important year than ever than it's ever been before, and and that's because mental health has really been at the fore. Our community really came together this year and and had a lot of fun doing so and and, and really helped us change the face of men's health. We also, um, through this year, launched a new fundraising product called Mow Your Own Way, which I think worked really well for us this year, knowing that people are going to be or were locked um, at home and, and wanted to find different ways to fundraise. One of the the other things that I think has been quite different for us as a as a charity in the in the not for profit sector obviously is is that we've 
we've actually always been a technology led organization and and we really rely on our incredible supporters so really the the work of the fundraising happens from the incredible people on the front line asking for donations and a lot of that happens in in the digital world so asking for donations on social media picking up the phone and calling your friends so I think I think that's why it has worked so well for us this year and also people have just really been craving fun in a year that's been so difficult they've wanted to come together they've wanted to rally their mates together I think it's given people an excuse to to really give back in a year that's been so hard for them Oh, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, and, and I know that uh, obviously Movember, um, you know, it's a cause that, as, as I mentioned, runs all year. Uh, you can take donations all year. Um, but, the, but there is that heightened, um, I guess, awareness uh, and place in the market during that month. For your role specifically in the job that you have, how does the month of November differ from the other 11 uh, that you're working around the clock? Yeah, so the month of November is is very different. It's obviously centred around fundraising. We we do a lot of work throughout the rest of the year in raising awareness and and actually participation in the programmes that we run. This year alone, um, for example, we've we worked on a, a podcast that spoke to to new dads called Dad in Progress, and that was really seeked at uh, helping um, men through the most difficult time in their lives which is which is actually fatherhood um, we ran a really significant campaign called May 8 which we pivoted this year into an online festival which was all all aimed at getting better conversations to take place between between you and your friends we launched a a platform called Movember Conversations which was it's, it's basically a, a really immersive platform which allows you to, to understand how to have better conversations with a friend. So beyond the just how are you, getting down to the nitty gritty uh, around somebody's mental health and, and giving you advice along the way. We, we delivered a really interesting piece of work actually through a program that we've supported for a long period of time actually called Waves of Wellness. And Waves of Wellness is a is a surfing program which seeks to bring people together on the water and have conversations about their mental health. And we delivered one of these programs in Malakuta this year after the, the devastating bushfires. And, and that was a, a really rewarding piece of work to, to deliver back to the community. And then beyond all of these programs, we've got a, a tremendous team that work specifically in the uh, research and quality of uh, quality of life space across testicular and prostate cancer, and I'd say probably the the work that happens in in this particular space deserves its own podcast because there, there's so much that they do in the quality of life space for those men that are living with um, prostate and testicular cancer. Yeah, a, a lot of initiatives, and, and I could only imagine. Yeah, you mentioned how, how proud you are. I think every 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 job, um, you know, has that sense of pride when you, you know, bring something new into market or, or launch a new initiative, and and let alone when it's actually impacting people in in such a hopefully in such a positive way. So so that's that's really awesome. Um, you know. Uh, as I said before, I wanted to ask you, coming from um, jobs and roles and businesses that, that weren't charity, um, mm. you know, coming from agencies, etc., what's it like now, if you can sum it up for us in, in any kind of way, what's it like working for a charity, a, a non-profit organisation? Working at a non-profit organisation is, is very different to anything that I've experienced before. There are, I think, coming from an, an agency there's definitely quite a different pace. The pace of agency is very fast, it's very cutthroat. It's very focused on service and delivery and, and delivering things as quickly as possible. I think what I've probably experienced in terms of the biggest change in the way that I work is is taking, learning to take people on a journey and not, not working so much as, as an island or a team um, on its own and actually really trying to understand the implications that that has on the rest of the business how it impacts the organizational strategy and and actually the the responsibility that you have working at a not-for-profit as well is is significant you know we we talk about the incredible funds that are 
our, our Moe brothers, Moe sisters, non-binary Moes raise and they raise incredible funds for us. And so as a person that sits in the marketing leadership team, we have a really big responsibility to make sure those funds are being spent properly and effectively and, and deliver a really strong and compelling ROI. So in my mind, that's probably one of the, the biggest shifts for me as well, coming from working for big multinational brands that have massive budgets and, and probably didn't have quite as much focus on, on ROI at times that there's definitely more of a push towards that working in this space. Yeah, it's a key, it's a key responsibility, um, you know, on, your, on yours and your team's shoulders. Um, look, there's probably, I imagine, I'm assuming, should I say, that there's multiple ways to, to hopefully get a job for your business. But just for the listener out there that it does want to work, um, you know, for a charity or, or specifically for Movember, how, how does someone get a start at the business? Yeah, so... The, the world of not-for-profit is massive, you know, there's, there's hundreds of not-for-profits starting every week and, and, and that's obviously a, a challenge in itself um, for those not-for-profits. But for me, I think the best way that somebody can get into the sector is, is really sit down and research the organisations that you want to be a part of. It sounds really obvious, but a lot of people don't necessarily understand what sits underneath those organisations, how they're funded. One of the, the best pieces of advice that I got given going into interview for this role as marketing director was to get a hold of the annual report, understand where the funds are being spent, understand the cost ratios, understand the organisational strategy that sits underneath that. And that will give you a really good indication and steer of how that organisation is set up behind the scenes, as well as the work that they're delivering themselves so it's definitely in the research and then I'd say my, my biggest uh, piece of advice for people generally outside of the not-for-profit sector as well is to just try and catch up for people catch up with people for coffee because that is such a great way of, of just being able to learn about the sector and get a feel for the the types of um, sub sectors that exist in the sector as well because there are a lot of different not-for-profits that span across lots of different cause areas, uh, lots of different um, subjects as well. So it, it does take some time to really narrow in on the area that you, you want to be passionate about as well. And for me, one of the things that my mentor always says to me is that you want something to feel like a hell yes. And if it doesn't feel like a hell yes, then there's no point really looking at it, um, exploring it further. Yeah, that's a that's a cool call out. Um, I'm glad you mentioned you threw back to mentorship there because I was going to ask you that because I heard you mention it um, in one of the first uh, questions we asked around people that you mentor. Can you talk to me very briefly about that? Um, you know, with, can you acknowledge, I guess, who you don't have to specifically talk about the people, but who, who have you seeked mentorship from, or how that's come about, and then also um, how has your mentoring come about? Is it people inside your organisation or, or externally? Yeah, so for me, I usually seek mentors um, or mentorship from people that I've worked with in the past. So people who know how I work, but I don't necessarily have an ongoing working relationship with them, just from a, um, just obviously from a, a day-to-day perspective, um, because there would be a conflict of interest. But I, you really have to get somebody that understands the way that you work um, and and can can really play quite an objective role and and try not to get too much into the into the weeds of the feedback that they're giving. Somebody that can can also do a good job of of pumping you up a bit. Sometimes you need that, and and sometimes that's something that in in leadership roles you don't always get. And sometimes it's important to get that from a mentor. When it comes to the people that I mentor, a lot of them actually sit in the agency space and it's people wanting to get out of agencies into client side or into not-for-profit. So it's usually done on quite a casual basis over coffee. Sometimes it's done over the phone now because of COVID um, and people not necessarily being in the city as much. But yeah, a lot of a lot of people that are, are still in the agency world trying to get out. Yeah, and I imagine they've reached out to you with a similar kind of uh, how do I get to that next step or what's the right move, right? Yeah, exactly. 
Um, mate, very cool. And, and, and let's get let's stay on the work thing for a situ- uh, for for a situation here because I know obviously Movember, as you mentioned, and, and as as people can can uh, look through uh, on Movember dot com, um, you know you, you you're an organisation that tackles a, a variety of different issues. Uh, and you mentioned you know uh, prostate cancer, testicular cancer, uh, and, and general mental health. And, and I know. Um, you know, mental health in the workplace is not the specific remit that the organisation goes after, but it's obviously a big part of it. Um, and it's been such a tricky year, um, I guess, for careers and jobs and work. Um, you know, amazing for some people and absolutely, you know, black for others. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about, you know, how, how you see that kind of work to mental health um, matters relating into the Movember organisation? Yeah, definitely. And it's absolutely on our radar. The one thing that I will caveat is that I'm not a mental health clinician, but I can certainly speak to the experiences that I know. Um, Mental health and suicide is is already a a significant issue in Australia. There's there's no denying it. There's there's statistics that that tell us that every... uh, Men account for every three suicides... Uh, every three out of four suicides, sorry, and seven men take their own lives every day. So it actually is the leading cause of death among men aged 15 to 44. So naturally, there's going to be a lot of speculation around what what impact the the pandemic is going to have on mental health and, and has had to date. In Australia, there hasn't been any recent nationwide um, data, but on the whole, we know that things aren't obviously going to be looking great into 2021 because of the situational factors of unemployment, financial stress, relationship changes that obviously happen as a result of of some of the the situations that we've been placed in with COVID. A lot of men are going to feel a lot of um, pressure to be that traditional um, breadwinner and live up to the provider role Um, and certainly focusing in on men here there's a lot of guilt and shame if they don't live up to that we did some research earlier this year that found that um, specifically and and obviously this this is broader than the workspace but a lot of men haven't been able to ask for help or a lot of men haven't been able to Um, seek help when they've needed it the most so we found that nearly a quarter of men so 23 percent reported that their mental health had worsened since COVID-19 during a six-week period which was actually the period that we in in Melbourne were in lockdown and a third of those men um, had noticed some feelings of loneliness um, which which is significant. So we as an organisation obviously have a, a lot to do in that space. And one of the, the pieces of work that I talked about before was a programme that we launched called uh, Movember Conversations, which was that platform that was around getting men to connect and, and normalise that having conversations is what is needed the most right now. And you know, if, if a listener is going through some stuff right now, and, and this isn't a, a, I guess, a question for, for you personally, but more from a, a, um, the basis of the organisation, um, what's the November's guidance or approach, um, or kind of, I guess, first step suggestion uh, that you know a, a listener can can do or, or go to? Yeah, if it's if it's job related. Um, I'll I'll focus in on that first. If it's job related, one of the the first things that I would certainly suggest is is speak to your workplace and try and understand if there are, um, we've got a a system at work called EAP, which is basically a mental health solution where people at the office or obviously from home now can can ring somebody, have uh, an informal conversation, it's completely confidential and they can call back a number of times to speak to the same person. A lot of people, I would say, don't know that those services are available at their workplace. So my biggest piece of advice would be to to speak to your HR team and and see what is offered. And if it's not offered, it certainly doesn't hurt to to ask. We're going into the, for a a lot of organisations, thinking about the next financial year. So we should be having those conversations to try and get that, that bedded into budgeting. 
I think the other thing that that is really important is normalizing this idea of having a mental health day. So a lot of organizations are talking about it now, but in my mind, not enough. So that should be an option. It should be like taking a day off sick because um, in my mind, um, having having a mental health day is very much the same. And, and if that, again, is not a solution for your organization, try and have a conversation with the HR team about it. The other thing that I would say is, as much as it might sound quite obvious, it's always a good idea to have a conversation with your boss or line manager, or, or if it's not your boss or line manager, somebody that you can speak to in a leadership role within the organization to let them know what you're going through. Because more often than not, the the boss or line manager or senior person that you speak to will have dealt with this before. It's not a new thing. People shouldn't feel like they're on their own. The other thing that I think is really important beyond that is when people are taking mental health days and returning back to the office, making sure that they're um, having conversations with friends at work to let them know that they're struggling to make sure that they can spot any signs of when they might need some support take them for coffee go for lunch or you know go for a walk yeah it's great great advice and i I could imagine you know I, i i can only imagine how hard that is for some people to initiate that and 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 do that and think okay this is okay this is going to all going to work out but yeah, cr- critical advice and guidance, I think. Um, you know, I'd love to ask you, just again, staying on the work situation, um, there's been big changes um, in, in the ways that people work this year and, and I guess the, the physical location attribute is, is a huge one. Um, working from home, um, either by, you know, some in, uh, choice hopefully coming into it now as, as companies go back into the office, but also by demand uh, of the situation we've had. Have, have, you, have you guys seen any um, trends or any um, positive or negative kind of outcomes coming from that? I know personally, very quickly, it, it's, it's very yin and yang. I chat with some people who are absolutely loving it. Like, oh my God, couldn't have happened any quicker. Whereas others are stinging to get back into that kind of uh, environment that they're used to. What are, what are you guys seeing in that situation? So there's, there's I would say some big positives and and negatives that come from it and I think one of them that I really wanted to call out is that a lot of people find it difficult to switch in and out of of work mode and then find that real work-life balance there's a lot of tips that I think probably exist out there to to do that properly um which I can obviously talk talk through in a second I think one of the one of the other big pieces for me is the the lack of social interactions that people could be having from working at home and only having meetings and and not being able to have a conversation in the kitchen and not being able to to just have a conversation with somebody in the hallway I think one of the things that I would encourage people to do if if organizations are working towards having more of a, a working from home blend is try where possible within meetings to have a bit of a kickoff at the beginning of the meeting where you spend five or ten minutes just having chit chat to to properly catch up on the weekend or or check in with people Um, i think that can really go a long way we know that meetings are usually way more productive on zoom now so you can probably spend that extra time properly connecting with the team Um, i think in, in my mind, one of the other things that I think is really important around this working from home versus working in the office piece is, is I, I've spoken to a lot of people that have struggled with how working from home creates this feeling that your job then defines who you are because you spend your whole time um, working especially during lockdown a lot of people that i've spoken to from melbourne have said that they found it really difficult being um, at home with not other things to do i think what what we need to do a really good job of next year um, if if organizations are opting to do more working from home is is helping um, their staff helping their teams think about some of the other things that bring purpose in their day that aren't just intrinsically linked to their job yeah I, I 
wholeheartedly agree with that. Um, and just to riff off that a little bit, one thing that I think can kind of really um, aid that a little bit more and assist that direction is um, it's, it's kind of admin a little bit, but I don't think it happens near enough is around agendas and um, I guess, you know, clear point direction um, coming right from the top, you know, to the bottom uh, and even setting your own agendas throughout the day. Cause you're right. You know, you do, you just start working when you wake up in the morning and then all of a sudden you've been working all day and you think I've still got more work to do just to keep working. Um, and I think, you know, meetings without an agenda are, are terrible. Uh, and to your point earlier, saying that, you know, how, how do you start meetings a little bit with a bit, little bit of a refreshment, you know, ask people what they've been up to. Even just planning that a little bit more as a manager or as a leader can, can pay dividends. And, and, you know, the last thing you want to do is sit on five Zoom calls and have, you know, have to explain what you've been doing all day or, or you know, casual chit chat. Whereas if a manager's put a little bit of time into kind of, you know, even spicing that little bit of chit chat up at the start, it can kind of keep uh, keep it fresh, right? So, yeah, I think um, anyone that's going to continue working from home or as we transition back into the office and, and readjust to that, I suppose, um, you know, I think it's a, a that organisational um, direction from above will, will be key to that. Well, is there anything else, either a personal level or stuff that you've you've spoke about at Movember around as hopefully the world goes back to norm and kind of, um, you know, any any things we, we can further take with us to make sure that, you know, as we go back to the office, uh, I suppose, as you'll say, it's um, it's as positive as it can be? Yeah, definitely. I th- it's something we're talking a lot about at November at the moment, actually, is this feeling that a lot of people are going to be overwhelmed going back into the office. We've got our Christmas party tonight. and we've, we've even been talking about how strange it's going to be because we haven't seen each other for so long. And even the most extroverted of people are going to struggle because it's you've got so used to working from home. My biggest advice would be to really acknowledge the ambiguity and know and embrace that that's going to be there. You are going to feel so different going back into the office than you know when you were doing it every single day. I think the reality is that working life is it, it's never going to be the same again, and it, I think that acknowledgement is is really important i'd suggest also and this is something that we're talking about a lot of november is is considering what that split of your week looks like and and how you ease your way back into the office so starting with a few half days in the office and then the rest of the day at home to to properly start um tackling this this idea of being around a large group of people again one of the other pieces for me is really thinking about self-care because you you can just slip into old habits and and just work through lunch um, and not really consider time for yourself. So really try and book in those times with work friends or team members. The other thing that I think is the real positive from going back to working in the office and, and certainly something that I've experienced and I'm looking to reset is there is there is going to be a moment to reset this idea that when you've been working from home, you've maybe, you've worked through lunch or you've you've worked more hours than you should be. So I think it's a really positive time in the new year for for organisations to help people actually um, work normal amounts of hours and and really think about self-care. Yeah, manage the clock a little bit more. I like that. Um, Look, and and I I really hope your Christmas party is a lot of fun. As you said, it's going to be... I'm sure it feels a little bit strange um, having one without having seen a lot of those people in the flesh for a while, but uh, hopefully that makes it all a lot better. Um, Christmas parties also mean that the end of the year is is here slash near. Um, look, I want to throw to our listener question of the week, um, if I can, because um, this is going to be a great transition into the year 2021 or any time someone's, I guess, voyaging on that next step. Um, this question is from Alyssa, and Alyssa asks, where do you get your motivation and or inspiration from? Hmm, great question. I get my motivation and inspiration from a lot of different places. So for me, it is, it's usually people in the team. So uh, the people that I work with every day always bring such incredible challenges ideas to the table when it's not people at work i do a lot of uh, reading uh, listening uh, to podcasts 
I'd, I spend a lot of time um, outside as well. I think for me, getting out in, this sounds really cheesy, but getting out in nature, properly enjoying um, the outdoors is really important. And actually feeling inspired by things that are very day to day and really getting into that space of mindfulness so that you know you can properly appreciate the small things. For me, that idea of being able to properly switch off means that you can get more inspired by the, the bigger things in your day to day. So I think having having proper breaks and and finding finding time to yourself over the weekend is, is probably the biggest one for me. Because then when it comes to, to reading, when it comes to connecting with people, you can be really present and that's when you're you'll feel most inspired. That's great, Jason. Uh, thank you for that. A uh, great question by Alyssa. Uh, and I hope that uh, she is uh, finding some inspiration and motivation. If not, please reach out and, and we'll try and uh, help guide you. But awesome answer, Jason. Hey, thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you for being a guest on Dream Job Ready. This has been awesome. Uh, you know, the Movember organization, um, it's, it's been such an amazing and important part of, of the Australian culture for so long. Uh, and it's great to see the organisation, you know, powering even in such a tricky year. Uh, wish you nothing but best for the holidays, mate, uh, and all the best for you and the organisation for 2021 and beyond. Thank you for having me. Hey there. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. It means a lot. Please make sure you subscribe wherever you're listening and earn yourself an IOU by sharing this episode and the show with your network. You can connect with us on the socials at Dream Job Ready and feel free to email me any feedback you have or questions for guests to dreamjobreadypodcast at gmail.com. Lastly, but most importantly, if you need help or need someone to talk to right now, please call Lifeline Australia on 131114. I'll put that number in the description uh, or contact a similar organization in the country you live in. Mental health is not something we should ignore and the opportunity to get help today is better than ever before.